there's a misnomer, there's a social fallacy that surrounds uh, the view that uh, though the, the view that uh, because the vast majority of black men voted for the Democrat Party, that um, that there isn't a lot of conservative values there. Black men are very much looking for their opportunity uh, to do it on their own. And, and they're not looking for uh, necessarily for government to deliver something to them. Do you think Republicans are doing enough outreach in black communities? We can do a better job. We have an opportunity to get a message out and uh, we're doing everything that we can to take advantage of that opportunity. Hey, welcome to my show, guys. This is Andre with Yup, I Said It. Please go ahead, like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right, so <clears throat> election time is coming. It's right around the corner. It's going to be here before you know it. Wake up! <laughs> I want to tell you today why we need more black people to vote conservative this time more than ever before. All right, there are many different reasons why. We all know uh, if you've been paying close attention, if you're already a conservative, uh, yeah, I'm probably not talking to you, but there are a lot of people who need the lesson. Seriously. All right. So uh, I want to react to this CNN clip here of a group of ladies talking about why Trump should be arrested, why they believe everything that the mainstream media has told them for the past three years. They just believe it. They don't know what's going on. They really haven't done the research. Uh, and that's very clear, but, uh, there's a bigger uh, play here happening, and I think uh, most people are going to miss that. And we don't want to be on the back end of this saying, man, I wish we would have known this a year ago when Biden's in office again, destroying the country even more. Now, when I say destroying the country, I mean that the cost of everything is going to get really, really high. And I really want people that wouldn't normally vote conservative to actually vote conservative or just for the economy's sake, <laughs> just for open borders. If you just think about this, it's going to destroy our country if we continue this way. Okay. Regardless of how you feel about Trump, regardless of how you feel about uh, the conservative movement, you really need to think about this. Think this through people. All right. So with your vote, you you have the power to change this. Trump can stop this. He can actually put it to a halt. He can uh, put tariffs on countries that need tariffs. He can lower taxes for business owners, which will help us breathe. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you don't want to be a part of your country's destruction. All right. That, that's basically what I'm saying. But I'm going to go ahead and react to this clip. And I want to kind of fact check this and as they're going along. How women voters react to the former president's hush money trial will be of particular interest to a campaign that's lost that vote by double digits the past two presidential elections. Our Randy Kay recently sat down with undecided Republican, Democratic, and independent women voters in North Carolina, which the former president narrowly won in 2020. It's part of 360's continuing series, the 53%, which is the average proportion of women voters in presidential elections since 2000. Here's Randy's report. Oh, I was like, come uh, on over. On Would you like a plate? Come on, girl. Thanks for putting this together. <laughs> it's not the catch and kill that's the issue. Mm -hmm. It's the cover-up that's the worst yeah. part. You know, it's the the devil's in the cover-up. Well, let's right. right. uh, The accountant in me. <laughs> right now, they're talking about the Stormy Daniels hush money trial, okay? Now, there's some interesting details about this case that I really don't want to go too far into. But we do know so far that Stormy Daniels has admitted on two different letters that she did not sleep with President Trump. That as a matter of fact, he was a perfect gentleman to her. Um, and it's it looked like that Stormy Daniels has gone back on that agreement when she's put her name on the letters uh, saying that she did not have an affair with Donald Trump. OK, so. Right now, the Democratic Party is absolutely desperate to get Trump in trouble and make him look bad uh, before this election. This is total election interference, uh, but these ladies are going to be, uh, you know, giving Trump the blues over this because they simply just don't understand all the details about the justice system and how things are being ran in New York, by the way. And we've talked about that many times. Uh, you know, are they aware about the things that are happening, uh, really happening in New York as far as crime? Uh, the people that are not getting prosecuted for actual horrible, horrible, horrific crimes in New York. 
Um, and we spoke about this, how Kathy Hochul, the governor, is not even allowed to go to police officers' funerals uh, because she's soft on crime. But for some reason, they want to give Trump 91 charges. Uh, this is it's absolutely crazy when you look at all the things that are actually happening in New York. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to give you that backdrop because these ladies have absolutely no clue what they're talking about. And they're just gossiping, basically. But this is CNN. The numbers don't add up. Okay? The math is not math. Okay? The numbers probably don't add up when you've been drinking like this. Okay, so <laughs> I think that they're, they're drunk. He com completely sees himself as Teflon. Like he does nothing sticks to him. And I'm really nervous that he's starting to look like he's right. One of these is going to have to take him down. <laughs> I just can't see how you slither out of 90 plus charges. <laughs> how many of you believe that Trump should be on trial for this? Raise your hand. All of you. There is not only smoke. There is fire. How many times can you say it's a witch hunt? I'm personally tired of hearing it. <laughs> Let's pay attention to see if these women are going to talk about any of the actual details in the hush money trial for Trump. What a desperate attempt to smear someone's name. Um, you know, it's just ridiculous. OK, no one's really talking about any real crime anymore. It's crazy. I just that, that part really blows me away that there's actual criminals running the streets doing horrible crimes. And we just keep talking about the orange man. So if he's misappropriating campaign funds or, you know, election funds, then, yeah, he needs to be prosecuted. If we have one person who is above the law, mm -hmm. then what is the purpose of the law? <laughs> Did Obama do drone strikes on people, on children? Who's above the law here? Because some of these... Democrat DAs and uh, I just did a video the other day about a Democrat DA out of New York City uh, who wouldn't even allow the police officer to pull her over on a traffic stop. Uh, he had to drive all the way to her house, to her garage, and she gave him the blues uh, about pulling her over because she was the DA, okay, above the law. If anybody's above the law, it's these liberals. In the Democrat ran states and cities uh, that think that they're actually above the law. So the judge, first of all, in this case, uh, has uh, his daughter has taken uh, or has given a uh, lots of money to the Democrat Party. So this is already an imbalance here. Uh, this is already unconstitutional. He's they put a gag order on Trump that he's not allowed to speak about this. Um, you know, so. We're talking about above the law. It's very funny that everything that they're accusing Trump of is what they're actually doing. And it's starting to come to pass. And ladies like this just have absolutely no clue. They, they're rich and elite, probably um, friends with Oprah. Our accountant wrote it down. Right. Recorded it. You got witnesses who said you did it. It's not then, about what he's, paying, yeah. Yeah. what he's paying for. So Michael Cohen was Trump's lawyer who apparently wasn't a very good lawyer if he end up in jail. <laughs> uh, but he's the one that actually set this up and did all of these things. And they're accusing a Trump of, um, now uh, we've gone through this before we I've hired lawyers before, uh, many people hire lawyers, uh, but you are, are not a babysitter. Once you hire a lawyer, uh, to do the right things, we're talking about New York city, um, I, I don't know anybody who would actually want to pack up and leave their red state to move to New York uh, because the crime rate is out of control. Uh, and, and, and anytime you got crime out of control uh, in New York, it says that the justice system is out of control and, and they're not ran by the right kind of people. Uh, so. <laughs> That's an inequality even in the story because the porn star, the right. Yeah. Right. we're characterizing and castigating uh -huh. the women. Right. right. They were doing a job. So prosecutors say that Trump has violated the women. They were doing a job. So prostitution is now a job. OK, so I highly doubt if Trump had any relations with this woman. I really do highly doubt that she already stated that twice in two letters that she put her signature on. And then later, uh, when uh, all this was over and said and done, she went back to say uh, they made me sign it. They made me agree to this. 
nonsense, okay? She's going to be caught in her lies. If you're a porn star, first of all, uh, who's to believe you? Uh, if, if your reputation is as a, a person who sleeps with other people on camera for money, who's to believe you, okay? All right. Trump was actually smart to make her sign this letter saying this uh, because it wasn't true. Okay, this happened a very long time ago uh, when they you know, had this case going, uh, when they tried to bring this against Trump. But he said, you know, I'm going to clear my name. Uh, we need you to sign this saying, hey, look, I don't I didn't have anything to do with this because they're going to try to use this against me. All right. So you got to play chess with these people uh, and you have to have people sign. So which is a smart move. If you know you're trying to cover yourself, uh, regardless of what anybody thinks about you, if you're covering yourself and you're saying, hey, look, I didn't have anything to do with this, but uh, you know, I need you to sign this to say that I didn't have anything to do with this. Uh, that's a smart move. She signed it. Okay. We're talking about a porn star here. How do you trust a porn star, bro? Like, Violated his gag order, attacking prosecutors, witnesses, jurors. Does any of this surprise you? Right. This person has something more powerful than money. He has an audience. He yes. has a rabid audience yep. that is very willing to do whatever they want. So then does even a thousand dollars per violation or, you know, going to jail for any period of time, is that enough given his influence? He's going to have to go to solitary because Secret Service cannot, right. cannot protect, protect him in general population. I don't care. Put him under the jail. Put him in solitary. See, see, these are emotional people talking here. All right, they're talking using emotion. All right, at least the woman in the white sweater, uh, at least she knew a little bit about the case. She was citing some things that uh, uh, actually they are accusing Trump of and and some of the so-called evidence that they have against him. But uh, it's absolutely wrong. And she didn't mention the two letters that Stormy Daniels actually signed. Okay, with her signature uh, stating that she never had uh, sex with Trump. Okay, she never had an affair with him. She said he was actually very polite to her and everyone that he, uh, that uh, she was with, uh, which is a smart way to be. All right, when you're in a, a room full of snakes, you better keep an eye watch out on everybody. And I don't really believe that Trump needs to pay anybody anything. Uh, he doesn't need to have to pay a porn star. Or Trump could probably pay a bunch of other women to attack him. Okay, if he wanted to <laughs> sexually, if he wanted to, you know. So it's just not to me uh, from a from a logical standpoint. I'm looking at this case and it doesn't make any sense. Why would the woman sign a paper saying that this never happened uh, if, if it happened? OK. Why? Why would she do it? Is she being honest? See, got to watch it. We do not. We do not shriek from putting other inmates right. in solitary confinement. Right. That's what put have them to there do. and shut up. He yeah. can How about the people that chopped up the bodies of other people? Two, two other people. Four people chopped up bodies. Okay, in New York City. This just happened not that long ago. Okay, the evidence was overwhelming. All right, the prosecutor said uh, they went to barbaric lengths. Barbaric lengths to hide the evidence. Blood was everywhere. Okay, but they couldn't prosecute these four people that murdered two people and dismembered their bodies in New York. Kathy Hochul was asked about this on The View and simply had no excuse for it. Okay, okay, this is what we're talking about in New York City. These women know anything about that? No, but they got their wine. They got their uh, gossip uh, ready, they, you know, and, and they're on CNN. Okay, bashing Trump. It ought to be a great time. Thanks for putting this together, she says. You know, meanwhile, uh, we, we're sending troops over uh, uh, to fight Ukraine, uh, a Ukrainian war. These people don't care about none of that. Okay. Talk to the walls. He can talk to the rats. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> when it comes to your president, do ethics matter? Yes. 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 The leadership of the free world? Yeah, ethics yeah. matter. Of course they matter. Oh. So ethics matter. How about cocaine being at the White House? How about the president's son being a crackhead and his laptop being displayed to the world that he left at a pawn shop and that was covered up by Twitter? Did anybody talk about ethics when we were talking about Hunter Biden's laptop and how Joe Biden raised his kids? OK, anybody talking about that? I don't hear any of these women mention anything about that. But instead, uh, we're talking about Trump and a porn star and how he covered up some a payment, you know. Meanwhile, we have actual visible proof of Hunter Biden on his laptop 
sleeping with young prostitutes, okay, snip, smoking crack uh, on the the laptop. Was this Russian different disinformation? Does, oh, those pictures are Russian disinformation with him with a crack pipe? No, they weren't. But no, none of these women are talking about any of that. So are we going to now talk about Joe Biden's ethics? Let's see. Doesn't yes. care about his he family. doesn't care at all. He doesn't all. care about anyone except himself. Some of those stories might have deterred some of that electorate from actually voting for him, mm -hmm. especially for the far right um, side of the Republican Party. Yeah, so I want you to understand that that's the reason why our economy is in trouble. That's the reason why we have open borders. That's the reason why, you know, uh, people can't afford a loaf of bread uh, because of these kind of people here. All right. Not just women. Not just white women, not just black women. Not just, it's just a liberal agenda. They can get these people to believe anything as long as it's on the news. Okay. They can literally get these people to believe anything. It's crazy. All right. It is absolutely crazy. So nobody's allowed to think on their own on the liberal side. You're not allowed to do free thinking. You're not allowed to do any research or say something that, or ask a question. Just like Nancy Pelosi, I was just on MSNBC uh, and she got, called out to her face uh she 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 talks to the reporter uh katie tar like she was like a like you know some sort of peasant you know like she said i said he had the worst job ratings ever like the way they talk to people it's like you're not allowed to say that you're not allowed to what, what's wrong with you you're not allowed to are you, are you serious you know as far as they know trump's going to go to jail you know it's absolutely nonsense. But this is why we need black people to wake up because you're going to be affected by this the most. All right. All these rich elite people that, you know, are doing very well and they have government jobs. And, you know, you, you out there trying to get a business going, you know, you don't want to depend on any government. You, your parents were on welfare all your life. You know, you're just an average guy or average girl or average family. And you're just trying to make ends meet. All right. Uh, these are the people we need to actually wake up and smell the coffee. All right. Because, uh, these, these sort of people like this, the Oprah fans, uh, they will, uh, try to convince you that, you know, somehow these charges are very real, you know, regardless of all the other crime that's going on, you know, as if like, you know, there's not inner city crime, man, it's crazy. And it's, it's all because of the white man, you know, this is nonsense. You have to start looking at things for real in a real way. All right. Just because you see it on the news. <laughs> okay. Uh, that doesn't mean that is true. Just because they're in the suits and ties and they look smart like Anderson Cooper. Okay. This does not mean that he's being totally honest with you. It just means he's paid. Okay. He's paid to say what they want him to say. Period. That's all that is. He has an opinion. Okay. Their opinions. That's all they are. Uh, but the real truth is what we can see. The real truth is what we can hear. The real truth is what we're going through. That's the truth. Okay. So if you're not going through anything right now, uh, and, and you think Biden is the greatest thing since they came out with loaves of bread, then there's something wrong with you. All right. That means that you just haven't done any research. You just, you haven't, you're too high up in the tower of Babel to realize that people down bottom are suffering at your hands and at your decisions and that you could change it because you don't care to really look at things objectively or really ask any serious questions. That's why we're in trouble. But I want to play some clips here uh, because there are more black support. I want to play some clips here because there are more and more black supporters coming out for Trump. Uh, and most of them happen to be black men. Uh, and I think that if we could get a hold on the black men here and just get them to see what's going on, they would understand and talk to some of these crazy liberal black women because <laughs> okay? they don't know what to do. They really don't have a clue. They just, they're going off of emotions and that's what women do. That's fine. But when it gets your country in trouble and it raises the cost of everything and we're in foreign wars, then something has to be done. Somebody has to step in, take a look at these clips. And I think that this is groundbreaking I think that it's amazing that black men are standing up to say something about what's going on and put a stop to it. 
According to CBS News polling, President Biden is losing support among black voters in Georgia. That's compared to how he did in 2020. He still has a commanding lead over former President Trump among this key voting bloc, but waning support from them in a battleground state could have major ramifications for the general election. Our Torian Small sat down with several black male voters in the state who are backing Republicans. So, Torian, this is a fascinating conversation. I'm so eager to uh, see what you learned from them. Um, why are these voters that you spoke to inclined to some conservative ideas? Yeah, so two things, Caitlin. I met with um, canvassers with the New Georgia Project. It's a left-leaning black voter advocacy group mm. uh, in the state. And uh, they're telling me that they're seeing young black men be more open to considering Trump because they are the targets of misinformation. Part of that is uh, the accomplishments or opportunities uh, that, or these perceived opportunities for that community is being attributed to Trump uh, in their minds wrongly instead of Biden or even Obama. But this group of black conservative men I sat down with said that they want to buck the idea that black men have to belong to the Democratic Party. Here's a bit of our conversation. I think that there's a misnomer, there's a social fallacy that surrounds uh, the view that uh, though the, the view that uh, because the vast majority of black men voted for the Democrat Party, that um, that there isn't a lot of conservative values there. Black men are very much looking for their opportunity uh, to do it on their own and, and they're not looking for. Uh, exactly. That's the way I feel. One hundred percent. Whenever you uh, vote for Democrats, basically, to put it very simple, uh, you are going to be dependent on the government somehow, okay? That's just how it goes, all right? They want you to be dependent on them. Uh, me, I don't want to be dependent on anyone except me, all right? I don't I don't want anyone having uh, power over, excuse me, whether I can afford this or afford that or go here or go there. You know, whether I can, you know, you know, when I start a business, uh, who can tell me what to do, what to go, where to go. It's, it's just, a, you want to do things on your own. Take, you take accountability for yourself. You are responsible for your creativity, your business, not the government. That's such a weak way to go. And it, it really is. And, and all the race hating and the, the racial division, that's just a, uh, distraction. Okay. It really is just a distraction to get you to be on that side. Uh, because, and, and when you, when you see how empty it is on that side, you realize, man, I could have, you know, when I, if, if I'm conservative, wow, I got a, a lot of tax, uh, breaks. I can start a business that you, you know, I can, I can provide for my family and I can feel great about that. Uh, you know, but all in the name of racism, uh, you'll give that away and you'll throw that out of the window, uh, because you're mad about your skin color. It's so childish. It, it's so it's just so played out right now. Nobody wants to tolerate it. We're not going to tolerate this time the race hustling. We're just not having it. The black conservative men are not going to tolerate it. I'm telling you that right now. We're not tolerating it. All right. They got a problem on their hands this election because uh, it's just not going to uh, go in the liberal favor. It, you know, th there's it, the, the economy is too crushed. It's just too bad for, for most people. All right, for most middle class people, for most business owners, I mean, small business, large business, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, the cost of goods sold, the cost of uh, services are, have gone up tremendously. All right, and it's it's just no way around that. The Biden administration can't fix that because they caused it. Uh, necessarily for government to deliver something to them. That's uh, 41 year old Azad Ahmadi. He was actually an Obama, Obama, Trump voter. Oh, he uh, flipped in 2016. And that's really smart man. He gets it. He understands. He sees the opportunity. He's still young. He's 41. He's like, you know, I can start something now. I, I better get my uh, I better get my act together and, 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 and really nail down, because if I get a business going right now, uh, you know, 10, 20 years from now, I could be set for life. Uh, meanwhile, the same people that would be race hustling and, uh, you know, thinking about how brown they are uh, will be somewhere miserable, broke, busted, disgusted, smoking cigarettes somewhere, maybe getting drunk. I don't know. But 
you would be set for life if you started working on a business and you had less regulations and less taxes to pay. Not only that, but your economy would be great. I mean, I don't want my kids paying $90 for a loaf of bread. I mean, if we keep going the way we are right now, that just might be possible uh, to happen. Uh, who knows? I don't, <laughs> I don't know how much it would be, but uh, certainly it would be, you know, if, if it's, if it's already at almost $10 right now, uh, give it another 10 years, we're, we're going to go up pretty high and significant, uh, you know, increase in the economy and just the cost of goods. It's just outrageous right now. We can't, we can't tolerate it. If you have kids, you know, uh, you better try to fight for them and you better be teaching them, uh, all these things that you're learning, uh, because otherwise they're not going to have a clue how to fight themselves. Uh, if this happens again, because it will probably happen again his introduction to this conservative uh, movement there. Uh, but again, they're looking to reject the idea that black people have to come home to the Democratic Party in November. Yeah. yeah sorry, the Democrat Party is not home. <laughs> okay. You shouldn't be home anywhere. Uh, Republi if Republicans start acting up and, and, and doing the same thing that Democrats are doing, and Democrats start switching and acting like the Republicans, I don't, you, know, you, you shouldn't just be stuck and clung to a party. It's not about a party. It's really about the people and, and what uh, the people can sustain and what the people uh, want in their lives and what the people want to pay and how, how, how the people want this to go. It's just all about the people, not the government. <laughs> Okay. The government just worsens everything because they're a small group of people who uh, sort of delegate how things are going to go for a much, much, much larger group of people, which never will work. That's fascinating to see that transformation. Um, you mentioned that you spoke to a liberal leading group about black voters, but you've also spoken to the Republican Party about their outre outreach to black voters. What what are they doing? What did they tell you? Well, so there's a clear disparity in outreach efforts post 20, uh, really 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a lot of those uh, community centers or outreach centers shutter uh, after 2022 mm -hmm. happened. In Atlanta, I went to a center uh, in College Park, just right outside of Atlanta. Uh, it was the African-American Community Center there that closed down and nothing has replaced it. I mm. talked to the same conservative group about that. If they see that as a problem, this mm -hmm. is what they had to say. Do you think Republicans are doing enough outreach in black communities? We can do a better job. We have an opportunity to get a message out and uh, we're doing everything that we can to take advantage of that opportunity. This is something the Biden campaign is seizing on. They have yeah. a pretty expansive network for outreach specifically. Mm -hmm. But as we saw with uh, Vice President Harris today, they're mm -hmm. looking to target black men as part of this tour that they rolled in out and started to roll out in Georgia today. Yeah, with with. Well, they targeted black men. All right. <laughs> OK, the Democrat Party has certainly targeted black men. All right. They targeted them by giving the uh, girlfriends and wives welfare. So they don't want to stay in the households. They targeted them. All right. All right. They, tar they targeted them by telling them that, uh, you know, it's OK uh, to her to abort your baby. All right. They, tar they target them. Oh, yeah. They've been targeting them for a long time. And that's a problem. They haven't done anything to help them. And everybody in the black community knows that they know it. All right. That's why it will be an absolute revolt if this keeps going on, uh, because everyone in the black community knows that things are unfair. They know that the Democrat Party is awful. They know that. OK, the only thing that they could push is that the Republican Party is racist. He's a hardcore racist. That's the only thing they can do to, to get the black people to get emotionally charged up to hate someone. It makes you forget all about the hard times you're going through, right? Not anymore. It's not going to happen this time. I really don't believe it's going to happen this time around. The hardships are really bad. All right. The injustices that they see in the court system, the cultural war that's going on right now, it's not good. We're not going to tolerate it. We, do, we can't. All right. It's not that we, we don't want to. We can. Yeah, we don't want to, but we can't tolerate it. So, you know, I don't care what they say about Trump, but, but what they're saying, uh, but I do care about what they're not saying about Joe Biden. OK, the things that they're not telling the black community about Joe Biden, he needs to be Joe Biden needs to be, uh, you know, his his efforts to arrest black people, his efforts to destroy our economy, his efforts to uh, lock up the Jan Sixers, his efforts to prosecute Trump, his efforts to do all these things are so unconstitutional. It doesn't even make sense. Uh, OK, so Joe Biden's the real criminal here. He's the one that needs to be prosecuted. All right. His son, Hunter Biden, they need to be prosecuted. All right. They need to be arrested a long time ago, long time ago.
All right. Look up the Hunter Biden laptop store. You can find it. You can go on Rumble and check out the Hunter Biden laptop. And you can find a lot of stuff about Hunter Biden's laptop. All right. You want to go and really do some research. So share these videos. Share them with people. Tell them about the Hunter Biden laptop. Go and look at Joe Biden's son. Like father, like son. The Bible says the, the son does what he sees the father do. All right. Who taught him that? Where did he get it from? What are Trump's sons doing? Hmm? Oh, they're criminals. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, are they smoking crack rocks? Are they smuggling cocaine in the White House? I think not. Allegedly, that's what Hunter Biden's been doing. If everybody thought about this logically, it'd be an easy decision. But since you have the mainstream media uh, out here telling you that, you know, the, the, the orange man is so racist uh, and, and, and anything he says about the color black, I mean, he, he could be talking about anything. As if he says black, they'll twist it and make it seem like he's so racist. But it's not true. His policies are amazing. I'm telling you that right now. I read his platform for, uh, I think it was the, uh, the platinum plan. I, I read that this the other day. Amazing. Absolutely amazing what he wants to do in the black community. Uh, but he wants to, he wants to help all communities. That's what I'm concerned about. I don't, I wouldn't say, look, you need to help the black community. I'm not one of those people. I'm not one of those black people that says, uh, you need to do something for the black people. All right. Now, no, I want him to do something for the entire country. That's what we're uh, looking for Trump to do. All right. Make it great for everyone. Make America great again, not make a black America great again. Uh, but we need black America to stand up to help America become great again. Okay. That's what we need to happen. All right. So guys, with that, I'm going to head out. Thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and until this has been, yup, I said it until next time. Thank you.